here we are. We're online. We're streaming. We're now, oh, we're we're now like actually Hooray. live live now. And we finally made it. A little red light needs to like come on in my room when that happens. Maybe I can wire that up. <laughs> I think you should get, yeah, it, it should be the live light or it should actually be a little sign that says live. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. That's a great idea. It is the 21st century though. So it should probably be like an OLED panel as well. Yeah. And well, there's a lot more spinning. that can go wrong with that. Spinning RGB lights uh, is, is how everything works now. So yes. Yeah. Um, we are done with blockchain, basically. We did um, it. 1.3 landed earlier this week. Last week? I don't remember. Blockchain was great. It. Yeah. Blockchain was good. Greatest blockchain game ever. Got a little bit of a Reddit bump one day. We got like maybe a little under 100 people playing it that day. And then, uh, yeah, then it tailed off. So that's... That's actually watching. more than that's more than I thought. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, also, we showed it off to a bunch of people who we wanted to have join us for a game jam, and they all were like, "Well, that's fun." So, I think I think that sold it. It was also your uh, your friendly, non offensive, but like expertise conveying tone in the in the advertisement. We were able to find like, people to do game jam. I'm like a pretty okay manager. Yeah, I'm really good at the cold call hiring. <laughs> <clears throat> Dom, Dom has a reputation that extends beyond just this just this stream. He's a, maybe I'm working on it. <laughs> Sorry, I've got um, wow. for 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 clarity. This is burrito phlegm. Man, I haven't had a burrito since I moved here, and I am very. I would, it must I sell like, burritos in New Haven. We ordered one once, and so I've I've, or, I've ordered burritos twice here. I just don't count it because like both times they've come and they've like not even been fully sealed in the burrito to foil. So it's, it's like the, a it's like a Chipotle burrito. That's like the apex of, of a New Haven burrito. Chipotle burrito would be the best burrito here. It's really tragic. I think Connecticut needs more Mexicans. Yeah, there's some there's some taco places that look good. I feel like it's I feel like I'm on Taco Coast, not burrito coast okay and i'm not i'm not sure why i don't so people claim after i left new york city that like they started to get some decent mexican food in new york um in spanish really harlem good. which is traditionally Port Port puerto rican but uh, mm. i mean i've had really good tacos in new york um yeah. i can't speak to the burritos though i just i just want a cancun burrito it's all i ever want yeah it's perfect food yeah, I mean, familiar? New York definitely has like the like fancy vegan taco, you know, in, in Williamsburg or, or whatever, and those are <laughs> those are those are great. Are you familiar with the Alameda Weehawken Burrito Tunnel? Because I suddenly understand why people wrote that at all. I do remember that. Was that did Mache make that? Well, I don't know. Uh, oh, here it is. I just I just found it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you got it too. <laughs> Yeah, this is um, this is Mache. This is a pin pinboard dude. Oh, this is this is his site. Yeah. Okay. He's really funny. He is. I like like him a lot, but also he's a huge asshole. He's got takes for sure. Yeah, I disagree with a lot of his takes. I think he's very well spoken. I like the very bottom of his page uh, where he writes colophon. <laughs> um sure sure um uh, yeah he's his, his blog is really funny um he has mm-hmm. takes uh he was the self-professed enemy of if, if this and that for a good like three or four years was he that's the hill he chose to die on for three or four years <clears throat> yeah okay. he was just really upset about it because he's like i got an api you guys should just conform to my api i don't want to conform to your api so it's, it's just like a uh. politics thing I think I think he had a point. We 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 knew it was a calculated risk to take the architecture that we did. Um, he he is a, at the very least sort of a true believer, open web person, and I respect the hell out of that. I think he's also he was also kind of like resentful of Ift because he worked on Yahoo Pipes, <clears throat> uh, yeah, which had a lot more potential than Ift ever tried to attain. I remember Yahoo Pipes very briefly. Yeah, they had like a whole like flow program. It was like Apex Web two point oh. Hmm. Right. Um, they had like a whole flow programming UI in the web. It kind of sucked. Let's just put that out there. It was it was too early. Ahead of its time. Yeah. 
Um, um, let's make the burrito tunnel so you can get good burritos. I mean, God, I'm desperate. He must have been living in New York when he wrote that. <laughs> Today's episode is about the best and bounced of 2021 and also before 2021 too. And maybe 2022 for good measure. There's one or two games in here that are about that are coming out in 2022 that we still want to talk about, right? I, I don't think I put anything from before 2021, but that's okay. <laughs> Disco Elysium, right? <clears throat> Isn't that this year? How do years? What the fuck? Really? How does what is time? I think Disco Elysium came out like two years ago, right? Oh uh, well, but but I played it this year. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Is we're oh, talking about okay, games okay. we played this year. Right. Okay. Okay. This is the best of our 2021. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We're on the we're on the same page. <laughs> and uh, live. Yes. Um. So we're just gonna burn through it. We're just gonna talk about some video games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Right. Why don't you Why don't you start? You could even screen share if you want to walk walk us through some stuff. Or as you talk, I can just Google. I'll just I'll just let you Google. Um, right, I'm gonna Google. I'm gonna pull this notion list up on my own too, so I can look at it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, and then you, we also uh, have a list of just like stuff we tried that is notable, but then we're just kind of like eh, and then stuff that was just like blah, but still play it through kind of thing. I mean, a list of things that we wanted to play but didn't get to play, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, most I feel like I feel like most things are kind of blah. Blah is a blah is a good blah. Yeah, I think I think blah is like what you're going for. That it's like what does mediocre mean? But of the middle, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, I think I I think we spent like multiple streams talking about how great Disco Elysium was. So that's that's a gimme. Uh, yeah, we have a whole episode about it. We almost don't need to talk about it. Uh, yeah, but I will I will say I've I've not had the desire to go do like a different play of it. I don't think. I don't think I ever will. I really enjoy my one experience as a uh, tequila sunset. And yep. well, let me ask you that. this. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, you should at least you two, I, when we talked about this, we didn't get to talk about what, what I thought was the juiciest scene in the game, mm. which is where you go to sleep in the lighthouse and you have this like fever dream about meeting Dolores day. Oh yeah. Cause it crashed my, crashed the it, fucking game. Crash your computer. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Maybe okay, this is so better. I should YouTube that. <laughs> oh, we're, we're getting like fucking spammed in the chat right now. There Such are like bots? four or five different spam bots talking about buying followers, primes, and viewers. I feel like this is like, it's almost shade, right? We're getting like six, five or six different random chat posters. Oh, and, they're, and they're on the stream too. And they're like, hey, maybe Whoa. you should get some more followers. I know because really... all, all you've got are, is us, and uh, it makes me sad. It's rude. It's rude. It, does, as fuck. it just makes me sad. <laughs> um, um, do you want to turn? Do you want to turn chat off on the on the stream overlay for a second? <laughs> um, I mean, I can, or, or or people can just see it. You know, uh, we yeah. apparently we can. I think we can turn we can turn on keywords that we can then filter. Right. Oh, that's cool. That's uh, that's powerful. Great. Yeah, that was a that was an old surly dev uh, recommendation. Friend of the stream. That guy's so smart. Yes, he's good. At, he's good I, at Twitch. He's really good. We're we're not good at Twitch. Here, I'll just I'll just push him off the screen. Oh, I can't type too, messages too quickly. Oh, too the quickly. <laughs> it thinks I'm the spammer. Tragic. That's ironic. Okay, yeah. so I do need to I do need to watch that YouTube thing because I haven't, and the yeah. game was still deeply profound. So fuck yeah. Yeah, this, the game is still deeply profound. That scene really kind of like a capstone scene, um, but apparently one that they didn't put enough polish into to prevent it from crashing some people's computers. That seems much more important than uh, yeah, than it should have been. But okay. Um, Thank you, Doctor Dobbs. They're <laughs> also helping out here. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, they're yeah. spammers. Disco Elysium. You should. Anybody watching should play it, uh, especially those of you with any kind of literary inclination. Uh, the final cut version, which which is what came out in twenty twenty one, has like voice acting. Just stellar. Just stellar. they kicked yeah. all of the uh, uh, the dirtbag left off of the voice cast. I don't think any of their recordings made it. It's it's so fucking funny to me because like this is the somehow the leftiest game I've played or make 
I don't know. It, le- it lets you do everything, but it still manages to have like a good take on just about every side. It is um, absolutely the leftiest game there is. <clears throat> and uh, it's also extremely well executed and not somehow unpretentious in doing that. Right. Yeah. Well, it's like, like these people clearly went to too many DSA meetings or the equivalent thereof. They're um, from Estonia. Yeah. So they, I mean, okay, these people got like their own went shit. to like <laughs> MFA programs in the humanities, you know, and like, like new preposterous lefty assholes. <laughs> and, and they understand the unique experience of sympathizing with somebody's political goals while absolutely hating their guts. Oh my gosh. And aesthetics. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's a thing of beauty. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would, I would like to maybe experience some of the, some of the fashier choices in this game too. Um, but yeah, I've never, this is like, I never, I've recommended this to so many people and I never would have recommended like even to leftists. And like, this is a game about being a cop. You should really play it. Yeah. Like just full stop. Okay. So I will concede to you that mm-hmm. I also haven't uh, been tempted to play this again, mm-hmm. but on the other hand, there are very few games that I've tried to play uh, over and over. In the past couple of years, I played Fire Emblem Three Houses like twice in a row. That's it's really funny to me that you like played it and then played it again. Yes. <laughs> never, that I've game, never touched that. That I don't know anything about it. Hit all of my right buttons, even though the gameplay was ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and then I've been tempted to play Witcher 3 again, but I haven't actually sat down to do it. It's too it's too big. <laughs> I've st- I still want to do it. The thing that's holding me back is that they don't have the the kind of remastered version of it out yet. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do it, wait for that. But yep. I uh, I occasionally go back to things. I'm just like, oh, I remember having a really good time with this, and I open up like a big open world. And I'm just like, so I'm just so pissed off at it. I'm just like, <laughs> why is there so much to do in this? Fuck you. <laughs> um, you know, I may I may very well have that experience with Witcher. A, a lot of that stuff in there, the, the kind of shock value aspect of it is just not going to hit as hard. Um, no, because that that one really pulled a good narrative throughout that I really cared about. Um, mm-hmm. I hear I hear the second season actually goes into a bunch of multiverse shit, which I really loved about the game. So, uh, maybe that is maybe something there. Then you should just make the Witcher four. When you say second season, are you talking about the Netflix show? The Netflix show. Okay, yes, yes. yeah, which I haven't seen. Um, I bounced off of it originally, but then I rewatched it again because I knew that season two was coming, and it, it grew on me. And Henry okay. Cavill is a is a charming Geralt. Yeah, good. I liked him. Uh, yeah, I think it was more like I was watching it, and I was like, I kind of know what's happening. I kind of what's gonna happen. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure I care to see this story again. So maybe it just needed more time. Um, right. Well, that was my off the list. I think I took one off your list too. So go. Okay. For yes, we both we both put Disco Elysium. They're way up there. Uh, outside of Disco Elysium, what would you say your number one it, number one game was this year? I boy, from that this list, it's a good list. It was. It's a good list to pick to pick the number one. It was. It was probably Yakuza Zero. I have such a good time going back to Japan in that game every every fucking time, and I don't really care how similar they are. Um, yes, Yakuza I, Zero, I, where you get to play as Majima. I mean, I think I think that was it. Like, yep. uh, and and Kat and I played this one a lot together because like the Majima story is so good. Like, it is really good. It's really good, and you spend the whole like. I don't know. It was it was richer for me having experienced like much zanier Majima, but like man, yeah, uh, I really I really enjoyed this experience. Um, it was yeah. What is there to say the, about it? It was the first just, part of the so Majima deep. story is better than the rest of it. I would say, I, I, like he he has this like weird relationship to other Yakuza dudes, like the guy who's kind of his captor that mm-hmm. uh, who is kind of a dick to him the whole time, but yet yep. he still respects him somehow. And then there's that one crazy guy uh, who's in the purple suit who gets killed in the prison. Um, I forget oh, his yeah. name. Oh my god, that was and I really like. I thought they were gonna make out or something. I was it. It was so it was so homoerotic. It was great. It was, I, and, and I, I loved everything that's about the guy that. that that Majima adopts his zany uh, persona. Absolutely. Probably. Yeah, he was he was proto Majima, and like I really thought they were gonna kiss. Um, oh, yeah, because you you fight him in the cabaret club. 
and mm -hmm. you know all, all, well, every, all good relationships start with a nice brawl right well he, i mean in this game yes <laughs> <laughs> it's i don't know I, I realized that probably would actually make the entire thing like taboo for japan but uh yeah I, I, there, there's a lot of like tacit homoeroticism in all, all in all over japanese culture um mm. but uh, well, you're not allowed to say it out loud i, that's I feel true. like maybe ryaka as a series is just teaming with it right a lot I of mean, dudes like ripping their shirts off before they fight this this series is all about bros loving bros yeah. um Man, yeah, just just the experience of Young Majima was really great. I loved all his interactions with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, it's weird because he was almost exactly like Kiryu, but better. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish there had been more of him. Uh, yeah, I played yeah. of the regular Yakuza games, not counting Judgment. I played zero, one in the Kiwami version, and then like mm -hmm. the first couple of minute, couple hours of Kiwami two. Zero is the best one. I hear people say two is the best one. So oh, I look okay. forward, maybe I look I forward should, to that. Maybe someday. I should have kept playing. I, I have to space these out. Like yeah. every every 18 months, I can like pick up a Yakuza, but like not more frequently than that. I'll go crazy. Yeah. Wow. So this is like in this list of games, Yakuza Zero stands out. Just goes to show I, you how good these games are, how good the setting is and how good the characters are. I feel like they're having like a real renaissance in the West at this point, And I'm just so grateful for it. Cause I think I remember this as like a PlayStation two game and being like, what's that? Why would I, why would I want to be, why would I want to play your weird mobster game? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, without, without realizing that was like Mark Hamill playing Majima doing weird shit. So. <laughs> totally. Um, all right. So uh, oh wait, you said Mark Hamill, did you play uh, in English or in Japanese? I played in Japanese, but okay, yeah, I played in Japanese he, too. He did the English in the original, not Kiwami. I don't think he's Kiwami Majima. Okay, yeah, I think he doesn't even remember doing it. Someone interviewed him once, <laughs> and he's like, "I don't know what you're talking about." He's like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. Um, okay, I think after the Elysium on, on my list uh, is I'll group these two together: Shadow Tactics, Desperados Three. From a gameplay perspective, probably the best couple of games that I've played. Uh, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed uh, your excitement about these. Yes, you enjoyed that. I enjoyed them. I, I appreciate. I did that. well, and uh, I bought this for five dollars at some point in the last six months, and someday I'll play it. <laughs> I really look forward to it. Yeah, um, yeah. I think they. I think Shadow Taxes. Shadow Taxes went down to like three dollars for the Black Friday sale. That's great. I know. I almost bought it for people, just because I was like, I'm really high on this game. <laughs> um, so the general idea of this game, uh, what's a good representative screenshot of this? This is this is like real time stealth. Real time stealth, yes. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so this is good. Um, it's, it's, to, to me, it sounds stressful, and I'm kind of surprised because I feel like it would sound stressful to you too. Uh, you're right. I for some reason I don't have a lot of daylight for stealth game like. When I played a little bit of Metal Gear Solid Five, it felt so arbitrary about like what the enemies could like how like what whether they could detect me or not felt entirely oh, arbitrary. It's so punishing, yeah. Um, and so it it makes you play extremely conservatively, right? Because there's not a lot of cues in terms of like what will work. So you just try mm -hmm. to like you like you like hide out in one corner of the map and you just like kill a guy drag him back to the corner and then go, go you know sort of like s s gradually crawl out mm -hmm. and this game largely avoided that because um i mean it is a stealth game quintessentially so you do have to kind of like camp out somewhere and like make sure that you're not seen mm -hmm. but there are very very clear obvious ways of distracting uh, enemies like mm. what Hayato here this is like uh, the ninja character he can throw rocks okay. that's one of his capabilities um, and that creates a little sound effect these two guys will turn and look at where that dropped predictably and then you can run around them um, the other thing about this game that's your superpower is that you can right click on any enemy mm -hmm. and it shows you their vision code right so it shows you in, in basically solid green um, where you will be detected in oh, like I half see. a second if you're standing in that space. And then anything with this kind of like striped texture mm -hmm. uh, means that if you're ducking, they can't see you. 
it's not the most realistic mechanic in the world, but it just makes the game playable. And you oh, don't yeah, care like, while you're playing. Your ducking radius sort of extends like over over by that building. You could duck right here. Yeah. In plain sight. No, but like if it if it feels good, it doesn't matter. So that's great. That's exactly right. So hmm. yeah, I thought this game was fantastic. And then what you gotta do is like you gotta run over and like stab a stab a guy and then pick up his body and throw it in the bushes. So and... is it is it like if Assassin's Creed actually made you care about assassinating people <laughs> like you don't want to be detected it actually matters if something happens yeah I, I think assassin's creed is a good thing to bring up because i think assassin's creed at least when i played odyssey and i would attack the greek forts it scratched a similar itch where like i loved like hiding in a corner assassinating somebody uh and then do you carry bodies in that game i don't remember i think you do right you can yeah, uh, ass- like assassinating somebody, and then just like like sort of like systematically taking out everybody in a base. I it's love really fun. love love that that kind of gameplay, and that's what this game is basically about. Nice, because yeah, because that's like the best part of that series, and it's a pity that it's like has a bunch of like you have to ride a horse for two hours in between yeah. thrown on top of it. <laughs> like no one cares. Okay, uh, horses are like I like them better than vehicles. But they are the vehicles of the open world fantasy game, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, big, uh, big. Well, big they are. Fan. They are literally vehicles, and they're also metaphorically like the shitty vehicle mini game that every big AAA game insists on having, right? Right. Like you, you can drive your car through Grand Theft Auto, or you can ride your horse through Red Dead Redemption. They're all. Yeah. They're all the same thing with a different, a strangely different uh, coat oh, of paint. Driving is so bad in GTA. It's just Dri- like the, the, the horse is really bad in Red. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going on over there, but uh, yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, honestly, anyways, they're, they're too realistic, is what it is. There are like a bunch of different, like really beautifully rendered maps. That looks lovely. Uh, yeah, it's hmm. the graphical style is timeless. I think you could play this game in twenty years and it would read and not look not look silly. Mm. Um, and then uh, you have like four or five different characters. They all have different abilities. Like one of them can okay. set a trap and then like blow a whistle. And that causes enemies that are patrolling around to go and investigate where you blew the whistle. And if you left a trap there, they die. And like, it's great. Um, Mm -hmm. Desperados 3, exact same deal, only the setting is the Wild West. Um, I did not. Oh, it is the exact same deal. Yeah, (laughs) it's really, I mean, there's there's a higher production value in Desperados 3. Um, uh, A very misogynistic mechanic where one of your characters is like a gambler who can put on. Uh, a disguise like a prostitute's outfit and essentially seduce male npcs and cause them to follow you and you can have you can like they can you can have them following you on the train tracks and the train can go and run them over um and you just put the misogyny to the side you know it's just it's just very casual it's it's in, a train thing that i can do as a man in america you know what I well mean? i was gonna say as far as as far as video games go that is like that could be worse <laughs> Yeah, she she's not wearing a shredded bikini because the sun hurts or because like clothes hurt her skin. Oh my uh, god. Fucking metal yeah. gear solid. <laughs> I love the metal discourse around that character too, because it was like, wait till you hear why she has to wear those outfits and you'll feel really bad. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Like these like kind of like legalistic dweebs who are like, oh, you just don't know the, the storyline. I mean, also that character was named what quiet or something <laughs> and never said a word. <laughs> she was like, by women are off. best seen and not heard, right? That's what Kojima is saying. To- and like Kojima is still like essentially beyond reproach, right? He or he's too big to fail. Like you can't like Kojima is still worth playing, even though he's like a desperate, you know, a, a, a des a desperate like archaic reactionary you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it's i i don't know i to in, in my mind he just tries he throws everything at the wall a lot of it sticks uh he has some sure. misses okay i think yeah. i think what's what's interesting is that the the sort of lead female protagonist in the next game uh has to wear all the clothes because like her skin is super burned so like i feel like he he wait what's the next game 
Uh, Death Stranding. Oh, okay, this isn't Death Stranding. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, oh, so the- he literally flipped this. He flipped the script. He's like, you know what? You, if you thought that was bad, then let me just do this. It's almost yes, like exactly. a hat tip to those people. You know, I kind of, I kind of saw it as one, and I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those are not the best parts of his games. <laughs> uh, not so great. I agree. It's it's interesting. It's it's the one you see the author come through the most in is all of his work, and that's like you kind of live with it. Yeah. Okay, so this is good too. Was so this, this better, is good too. Not as good, just because. Okay. I I just thought the storyline was better for Shadow Tax. The other thing that's great about Shadow Tax is is they just have enough storyline. Like they have this is like a great engine to do cutscenes in as in game cutscenes. Mm-hmm. The characters just talk to each other while you're playing the game, and those are totally scripted. Oh, um, I love that scripted shit. Events, and they have just enough character. <clears throat> They're not amazing, but they have it. It's it's amazing how low the bar is to to make a compelling game. You just need to get you just need to have character. It's on the ground. Yeah. It's like the storytelling in any one of these any of these things is so fucking low. It it's doesn't probably... even need to be like nuanced or or particularly multidimensional. You just have to have it, you know, just it can be broad. It can I mean, even I think... be stereotypical. That's that's why ever I think that's why everyone loves Yakuza. They tell a different story in every game and it matters yeah like the, the story is what you're playing for yeah uh, and it's not true of a lot of things well, um, okay okay i do i need to i need to play this sucker is what i'm hearing uh yes uh but th- th- then again this scratches my particular itch uh it's why i like thunder tier one a little bit because mm-hmm. Thunder Tier one has a lot of this in it uh and mm-hmm. a lot of the beats that we're trying to put into manchester are similar you know actually manchester's yeah. not really a stealth game so not yet not, Could be. <laughs> not yet. Um, okay, going down. Uh, do you want to talk about uh, Metroid Dread? I guess we had a whole episode about it. We don't need to say much more about it, right? Yeah, it was great. It was it was a really good Metroid. They did okay. it. All right, Metroid they Dread, made- another one that Dom and I agree was great. Uh, but yeah, then we kind of diverge from there, right? Uh, uh, yeah, you- yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, I really, I really loved Returnal. I have. Did you beat it? There's- no. <laughs> It's hard. It's too hard. It's apparently one of the least beaten games of the year. I don't know how they know that, but maybe it's about trophies, maybe. I guess I every game gives you a trophy if you beat it. So I think that's probably where they get the stats. I'm super not surprised because that shit was hard as hell. Um, and you're really good at video games, too. I'm pretty good at video games. Yeah. You play okay. it on hard mode? Did you play this on hard? I don't think there's a hard. I think there's, I think there's just Returnal. Okay. It's just Returnal. All right um i i don't know this like this scratched a real itch for me in the same way that control did uh in terms of like i like this american flag this is like the most european astronaut they could have designed oh absolutely like if if like if in maya there's like a european slider they just they like get, crank that uh, to 110 they couldn't get what's her face who is the actress who looks like that uh Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton, they, yes. They wanted Tilda Swinton and they exactly. and they got you got video games Tilda Swinton. Yeah, yeah. Um, um and yet she's got the American flag flying behind her. That's it's just, true. that was just them like, okay, well we 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 cranked the slider up, but we need to market to the Americans. Originally this was an EU flag or something like that, right? <laughs> or where are these guys uh, yeah. from? Finland? Housemark? If Housemark's Finland, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Or Sweden or yep. Norway. It's Scandinavian uh, of some of some some but yeah, this was, I mean, it was a really, it was a really good use of the the new controller stuff. I thought they did something like super unique with that. Mm-hmm. I just had, I just had a lot of fun with this as a roguelite and played like, like 30 hours of it when I was like getting my booster or vaccine hangover done. So like, yes. it was, it was this perfect. Is, so this is the vaccine game for you. Oh man. And it was, it was really just a wild ride. I loved it. Ugh, this fucking thing. I think, I think I accidentally went down one corridor on the first level. Um, mm-hmm. and this thing was just there it was like the first three minutes of me playing the game and i just like fought this thing and it fucked me up no no, no that that's the tutorial it's supposed oh, this to is kill the tutorial. You. you know i'm thinking of a different thing i'm thinking of some <laughs> other like different giant like ape-like feature in the first level there are some there are some giant big ones yeah and it gets i don't know how far you got but it just keeps getting like weirder and escalating in stranger ways i uh, unfortunately did not get past the first area oh shit okay yeah the that red screenshot is from the second area and it this is one? uh yeah yep and it's great it's really really fucked up <laughs> a lot of tendrils in this huh 
this game not tentacle anxiety going on yeah they they really they had a whole tentacle system uh that they that they were proud to write about and by god i guess i guess house mark now uh first party developer right they're now like in-house with sony seems reasonable they should um, be. they love their particles everything <laughs> is a particle in this game yep yeah it it uh it felt like Resogun in some strange ways. And I remember really Just loving European, that. man. This is like European. So max. European. Yeah. I'm with you. Uh, yeah. Get a bitch and sword. Yep. That's cool. I, I just thought it was, I thought it was well-balanced. I thought it was like fairly fair and challenging. It had yeah. sort of, it had like Dark Souls meets Hades for me. Uh, and that was a really fun combo. I played it. I acknowledged the quality and polish in every aspect of it. Then after you don't hours, have the, I was like, I, I, I couldn't quite do it. You don't have the roguelite, pa- pa- roguelite patience that I do. Uh. <laughs> well, it's funny because I played a lot more Hades than you do. You did, I think. Uh, and uh, so there, there are the games that kind of break through, through the shell a little bit for me. And then, yeah, well, H- Hades is just one of the first ever Hugo for a video game, so it is clearly exceptional. Yeah, it is the exception that proves the rule. I think so. Yeah, Returnal, good game. We both think really it's a game. really, really high quality and well made. Um, was one of my bounced off of, but there's it's in good company with some other some other like straight up oh, yeah, classics, there's, right? There's some winners in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, looking at this list, oh, Control needs to be mentioned. Uh, Control, did you finally play it? I did, did finally play that? it. So I bought it uh, years ago on mm-hmm. PS4, and it played like ass. Oh yeah, it really did. Very famously shitty in uh, in on the PS4. And then I think they patched it, and I think it got a little bit better. But it was kind of one of those games that was just unplayable, dead on arrival on the PS4. However, when I got a PS5, mm. they gave it to me for free. And by that nice point, upgrade. yeah, and 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 it was like uh, it was one of the early like we've adapted this game for PS5 specifically titles for the PS5. They gave it out for free, mm-hmm. so I snapped it up, uh, and I really enjoyed it. It was really Fuck good. Yeah, it's great. I'm so yeah, glad. I love really it good. so much. Yeah. I think um, that was definitely like my favorite one of last year. And it's just spectacular. I'm I saw that they they announced their their next game as Alan Wake 2, which uh big fan. It's gonna scare the pants off of me, but I can't wait. I didn't play Alan Wake One, but I guess it's well, it's, it's control-ish. Maybe maybe not no god powers. No god powers. Uh it's more like if control was about a Stephen King novel, then you'd like have it. Okay. Yeah. Or if Max Payne was about a Stephen King novel, you can kind of like come at it from either direction. Nice. Um. Well, sweet. Uh, Alan Wake oh, Two. We're looking forward to it. I can't. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Um. Okay. Uh. Let's maybe take. Uh, anything else you want to talk about in the best of lists? Mm. Things that are worth worth mentioning. I want to talk about some games that we didn't play or, or yeah, bounced yeah. off of. Yeah. Those it's almost more interesting to talk about those. Space, Space Warlord Oregon. Zero dollars game pass and probably worth $10 if it's not. Um, yeah. We talked about this on stream before, I think Chad Shakespeare. Probably so. I just love it. I, I think it's just charming as hell. Yeah. How much uh, have you played it? And like, are you going to, like did you is this a game that was like okay this game has style or is it more like i'm legitimately mm. playing this game now and kind of sucked in no i played it for like three hours and i got really su- i get sucked in whenever i open it uh which is i need to like figure out a way to enjoy playing games on windows more because it takes me like the activation energy is too high um it really is isn't it just turning yeah. on that pc and then being in windows you're like oh I know. I just like I just do it, and then something it's like you know what I can just like go do something else. Yeah, maybe it's a feature, not a bug. Um, it has style. I think it just has like I really enjoy a good send up of capitalism, and I feel like this sort of captures a lot of the things we talk about in terms of our own games sometimes. Uh, yeah, kind of it, like does a, it in a, in a very effective way. A bleak, sarcastic portrayal, right? <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, Oh, give us give us some give us some weird ones. Give some weird ones. Okay, so I bounced off of a lot of games. I played all, I played them all. I didn't pay for all of them, but I played a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, notable amongst these, Minecraft and Fortnite, two kind of like 
pillars of modern entertainment. Neither just, of them particularly that entertaining to me, even though they're old. sandboxes and like we're just old. It's, is that, it's is too late it for is? us. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> I have a lot of peers who are who are who are fat and happy in their software engineering jobs, and I'll see them playing Fortnite in the middle of the day, straight up. It's kind of shameless. I love it. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever. Yeah, whatevs. Uh, the Listen, other thing I would yeah, if sorry. you if you finish your tickets during the week, no one knows if you're playing Fortnite during the day. So it's cares? true. It's one of those things where it's like, well, if expectations are being met, then what's the problem, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I think just like all other workers, software engineers are about five x underpaid. So uh, take take that time back. What, Coupon company time. Was it on this stream that we had the conversation about the guy who I worked with? Uh, I don't even know the person's name, so I couldn't even name the name. Um, but they had read that Atlantic or Wall Street Journal article or some article about how there was some people in our industry that worked two jobs at the same time. Oh yeah. They like wanted to like, they wanted to use Slack to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. They're like, is there anything we can do as the purveyors of Slack to kind of like curtail this behavior? And then like to everyone's credit on our, in, in our engineering org, they were like, what the hell are you talking about? Man? Yeah. No snitches get stitches. Fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. The other weird thing I will mention out of these, uh, some, some straight up bangers that I just didn't fall into persona five, uh, subnautica shadow of the tomb Raider. This is like a lot here that like, it just wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. Um, interestingly transistor pyre, both games, uh, by super giant games. Uh, again, like Hades is like unequivocally the best game of last year for me. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like the last two years now too. (laughs) It's still, it's still, you still think about it. It's fine. I still great. think about it. And we played yeah. it close enough to the end of last year that it might as well be a 2021 game as well. Yep. Um, but I bounced off of Bastion and then I played <laughs> Pyre and Transistor kind of in my sort of like Hades hangover, just like I need a, I need a great game. And ni- none of those quite do yeah. it. I, th- I think the problem is you're playing them in the wrong order because starting Bastion was really cool in like 2000 and 12? 10? Yeah, 12. Yeah, maybe. It was, it was, um, it was that long ago. But like, it's like their shit is progressing, is getting better in time. And to go back, you, you have to like, you're looking at like the rough, someone's rough pencil drawing of like a Picasso later or something. You can't, I don't know. The bo- the bones are there, but like, it's challenging. Yeah. Um, Pyre, I could say a lot about. I think it's, it's it has the same level of aesthetic care invested mm. in, in it. Uh but boy, is that game paced poorly and damn weirdly structured. Yeah, too bad. Um, yeah. I guess uh, how if, you about you? Like ba- if you don't like basketball, you might be shit out of luck on that one. I but. love basketball, <laughs> and yet it's not my love of basketball did not translate over to, to Pyre. <laughs> um, okay, uh, which is funny because actually the thing I love about basketball is the human drama. You know, like all, all, all of like mm. the in-between game like uh, gossip and and controversy and all that stuff and, and that's what fire is about a little bit you know mm-hmm. anyways um how about you uh, uh other let's stuff. see yeah uh, i think we both tried to play enter the gungeon and couldn't get into it it's just too hard it's uh, crunchy or too, or too weird yeah it, it didn't feel fun and it's too it was too zany in tone it, it like it kind of put me out of it a little bit yeah yeah i couldn't it didn't i didn't feel a sense of progression um yeah. and it sort of like threw me off real early for that um yeah. I tried to play Monster Hunter World because so many of my friends say it's like the best thing ever. Yeah, I, I got, would... I couldn't get through the tutorial. I like, I hated it. I would, yeah, you know what? Same. Uh, like, I, I would love to like have a Monster Hunter. Like, all I want is like a juicy fucking open world RPG to take me in. Um, but so many of the, like, it just has to be perfect. Like, it has to be Witcher 3 or Assassin's Creed Odyssey for me, or else I'm just not going to do it. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, you you've got taste, perhaps too 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 high of a standard. Um, what what else is in here? Um, oh, I, I I a bunch of a bunch of stuff I tried on Game Pass. Uh, Forza, I played for the a new day Forza Horizons. Is that what mm-hmm. it's called? Yeah, because everyone was talking about it on Twitter, and I thought it'd be fun. Um, it's just racing cars. <laughs> I didn't get it. I feel like you can like collect cars though, right? There's a kind of like build out your garage. You can collect cars and also you can like tune the individual like brake and acceleration levels of every car you collect. It it's somehow like is an arcade game that has the fiddliness of a 
hard simulator. Um, I mean, I think that all of these games will like they simulate each tire as yeah, a separate physics now. object, right? Yep. Uh, I think wow. that's correct. Well, because that was yeah, we we can do that in Unity. We we know how we know how that works, <laughs> which is a little silly. Um, it's sort of like it was it was neat, but also it feels like the entire game is the driving between missions of another open world game, which was really weird. <laughs> Um, so yeah uh you know the the parts you hate about open world games or you're on a horse or you're on you're in a car and you're forced to drive around let's make a game just about that you know i i love i love me some gran turismo in the past like i sort of i sort of understand the concept of a racing game but uh yeah. yeah it was it was weird um i also tried fortnite i tried fortnite with you i tried it another time with a with a friend and like i don't get it uh was it you and i that were running around the mlk um MLK yes. exhibit. That oh was, God! Oof. Yeah, the for, Fortnite pays respects to Black History Month or something was really strange. Really, that was really rough. strange. That was mm-hmm. really rough. Yeah, that one. Uh, they shouldn't have done that. Hmm. That was a poor. That was a poor choice. Yeah. Um, yeah, there is there is this funny game, uh, Next Space Rebels, which I heard was really cool. Uh, seemed like sort of a mini Kerbal Space Program where you build like rockets. Okay. Um, and it's really cool, except that it is the most poorly paced game I've ever played um, because you build a thing and then 20 people send you text messages in virtual text message land. And you have to read and them all. You have to read them all. You have to watch YouTube videos uh, in, fake, in fake YouTube. Oh, oh there dude, you go. should play this game. I was gonna say that looks that looks like a Jeff style game for sure. Yeah, but it's about <laughs> rebel cops, which now <laughs> somehow I don't know if it's ironic. I, I it doesn't seem like it is. I was gonna say it looks like it looks like you're a bunch of old sheriffs, so I'm not sure if the cops are the rebels or if you're fighting rebels. I have questions. I, I think what it is is that the pansy ass bureaucrats have taken over and we just need some good old fashioned mm. Americans to go take care there of this you problem. Go. You know what I mean? I think that's what this is about. I, you know there aren't i'm i'm maybe maybe there's a lack of talent but like i don't see those right wing games existing too much maybe there's a couple of them but i feel like someone should have made that by now well yeah well we don't really have right wing movies too i think video game mainstream video games are a little bit left in the way that hollywood is left <laughs> mm-hmm. which is to say not really left but like, like it, barely, it has yeah. all like uh, the dusting of identity politics obeisances but still, Tony Stark is rad, right? I think that's oh, Tony Stark's that's, rad. Yeah. that's basically it. Right? I, and I cops wonder, are cops are good guys, and the U.S. They're, they're are our friends. Guys, yeah, right? they're. Yeah. We just have to salute their service. God, every I can't I can't deal with like a Transformers movie where like they have like these pornographic flyovers of like fighter jets every five minutes. It's well, so hey, strange. Man, I, I'm playing a right wing game right now. It's Thunder Tier One. Oh, I mean, you're it's right. actually it's it's made by it's made by like Russians. Uh, but this is like I think the right wingers fantasy, right? Like it has like an exceedingly crunchy like I mean, I guess, equipment screen where you like yeah, pick what it, the what it is silencer is on Duty, your right? assault rifle, you know? Yeah, Call, Call of Duty is is the rate of video games, I guess. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, so fair. But the gameplay kicks ass. You played the tutorial for this, right? Uh, I did, and I did. I did the first few missions too. It's it's really fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. Uh, I think it's probably best with four people. So I would love to squat up with you. And yes, your... I very much look forward to playing yeah. multiplayer with, with you. Um, uh, the in the tutorial, like they have a very inventive UI for all different kinds of things. I don't know if you played a gun with a scope yet, uh, but uh, that's a really cool feeling thing. No, I remember you mentioned that specifically as like an excellent UI. And I thought just the um, the thing I thought this did most uniquely was the uh the like contextual controls on that's exactly where i was going especially for squad all, games, yeah right it's a, it's like really clever it works super well yeah um, i yeah. i haven't played a, a real mission controlling squad mates uh mm-hmm. i think it would just stress me out but they did their best to make it like you're trying to play essentially an rts while yep. you're controlling an individual character so you could see w- why i thought this game was important to play even if absolutely yeah. oh yeah yeah no, no, they they did some very clever stuff. I think they, I think it is like a little too crunchy in some of the specific stuff. And for some it's reason, it's very crunchy. Yeah, yeah, and vault, vaulting over things for some reason just doesn't work. 
It's very strange. Um, what's the hacker Ubisoft game? Oh, um, dogs. Watch dogs. dogs. Watch, watch dogs. dogs. Is this a thing in Watch Dogs? Um, so Watch Dogs. Um, I think it was like press V to vault or press space to vault. Okay. And there's a scene where he's standing over his sister's grave, the main character. Uh, oh, <laughs> there's like a little overlay. This is just like press B to vault. And then, oh. uh, and then one, cause like, I, I guess they refrigerator his sister in that game or something like that. That's like one of his character beats is he's sad about his sister dying or something. That like sounds that. like the first game. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think the first game is the one with the character that everybody hates. Right. Um, I think as, as I recall, he was a sad sack the whole way through. And it sounds like they gave him some fridge motivation as well yeah yeah aiden pierce that's what this guy's name is Ooh. um yeah that's it seems like a douchebag anyways uh, <laughs> uh it was like press v default and somebody somebody tweeted uh at, somebody was like making fun of it right because it was just one of those like ludonarrative narrative dissonance things where like it's supposed to be a sad scene but then the game since it's a gameplay object you can like it like all the little ui cues kind of pop up and then one of the responses in thread was um uh it was like, uh, what, what was the exact phrasing? Uh, uh, he just needs to get over it. I think that was, oh. that was the response. <laughs> oh, man. It was so funny. I That's think that was actually a legit, so like, I, I, out loud, I started laughing at a tweet. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it's really, it's it's truly bizarre. Yeah. I feel like I see this in, in Oboro games so much where you're, like, doing a thing and, like the systems around you start interacting with you when you're supposed to be doing like an important story or like you can clearly see the designer intended for you to like see a character over there and have them talk to you but like i don't know you're pointing the camera over there and also you're like on top of a building and the person is within your radius but like three stories below you and starts like saying hello right how are you right and we know exactly why that kind of now that we like are on the other side of make up uh, of like playing versus making the games you know exactly how that kind of shit happens, right? It makes it's, perfect sense, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it almost gosh, seems correct yeah. in a certain way. Now that you know how these things work, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I appreciate I appreciate the consistency of the of the fantasy world they put together. Uh, what I love for, about this DuckDuckGo image search is that interspersed with all of these watchdog screenshots, just some dogs. There's some, there's some good boys here. Some, some real good, good boys. Good boys. Yeah. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> And, for, and satellites? Yeah, and huh. uh, oh, yeah, these uh, self in these like little brushes here. I'm being marketed right now as well. Who knows? I, Who can say? You know, I, I've switched to DuckDuckGo and the quality of search results is less good, but no, noticeably worse. I would much say. worse. Um, the, uh, the pro tip I would give to you is that anytime you want to search a, a forum of some kind, mm -hmm. so, or Reddit, or Stack Overflow, use Google. Yeah, all of like the like the kind of like user provided, you know, repositories of, of that kind, forums, answer question and answer places. Google is the thing to do, and the way you can do it is you can do G exclamation point in DuckDuckGo, and they have no provided shit. you that service. Yeah. <sighs> so if I just wanted to search for like G bang, press space to vault. <laughs> press could space I... to vault. Yes, this will give me DuckDuckGo. Yep. But then I can do press space to vault and it'll give me Google. They're just being kind. That's wonderful. Oh, that's so, that's so, so good. Cool. Today I learned. Yeah, I just like, I, I started to feel like I was getting tracked on too many websites and I was seeing it's ads. Uncanny now, right? And I was just like, yeah. I it. Yeah. Well, so, so what I did was I erased every cookie in all my browsers and put Facebook and YouTube in a browser together, use one for actually browsing the internet and put all the media apps in Chrome because Chrome has better media. So now I have, now I've created three persons on the internet and they'll never know. Are they different like email addresses too? No, no, I just like don't have different browser profiles. Uh, I mean, I, I use Chrome, Safari, and Firefox for th three different purposes. <laughs> I love Fuck it. Them. I mean, that's essentially what I do too. You know, like I think Chrome has better profile support. So all of my like, Jeff and Dom related stuff is in Chrome. Ever since I've, yeah, I, I like, I would use Chrome for like worky things because it's really good for that. Um, I sort of trust it as a corporate browser. Uh, 
I don't, ever since I found out they just like track everything you do without cookies since they own the browser, I was just like, this is unsurprising. And Wait, also, tell me about this. Oh, Chrome. Uh, if you sign into Chrome, all your browser history gets tracked. They don't, they don't need to put a tracking pixel on the page. They just record it to your Google account. Like they're doing target, right. Cause it doesn't matter. And they, it's in the privacy policy that they're going to do it. Um, I didn't know that that they were so brazen about it. Yeah. I think, I think some recent Google leaks, like sort of went into more detail on it, but Google is tracking you via your logged in Google account without cookies in Chrome, Yeah, which like no surprise. And I think is within their rights to do because you signed into the browser. Um, but I found it unpleasant. Do you have to be signed into Chrome? What, what, no. what advantage does it even confer to you? Um, Syncing? Maybe. Who if, you, you? if you, well, so this is why, this is why I signed into Google and Facebook in Firefox. I'm signed into nothing in Chrome except for like Disney plus and HBO. Okay. Yeah. I just use it for streaming stuff because it doesn't crash. And Safari is where I like browse, browse right. with nothing logged in. Right. It's so far so good. Cool. So now you now you know why I have I have so many different browsers open. It's the same kind of thing. It makes a lot of sense. I like I think I got exactly as fed up as you did. <laughs> okay, so that was our 2021 in gaming. Real quick, uh stuff that we have said we wanted to play but didn't get to play at all. Oh man. Um Chicory, I'm hearing a lot about it's a lot of people's number one of the year. Uh kind of a depression game, the same way that I guess Celeste was for a lot of people. That's why they identified with it. I hear it's I hear it's like a really sensitive take on mental health stuff. Uh, yeah. While also being <laughs> nice <laughs> and enjoy like the chicory tea. It it, it is a New Orleans coffee from Blue Bottle, right? Oh yeah, I mean I my my current coffee setup is that I uh, I order cans of the Cafe Du Monde coffee and chicory and just brew that in bulk oh, for cold nice. brew. It's delightful. How but... would you describe the flavor of chicory? Chicory. Mm burnt okay it kind of, it kind of adds a it adds like a bernie a burnty smoky flavor to the coffee bernie sanders uh, flavor to your coffee bernie sanders i don't know if i want a bernie sanders flavored coffee uh, <laughs> bernie 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 coffee would have won the taste test but i don't know i uh, i do always when i I'll, I'll be in san francisco in january and i will always get some blue bottle new orleans because it is my favorite they do it the best oh really how about cafe du monde uh it's different it's it's good it's equally good. Um, the only thing I know from Cafe Du Monde is they 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 market their beignet powder, like their their beignet, and uh, yeah. I've made it. It's delicious. Uh, yeah. It's a lot of oil to fry. Have you been to Cafe Du Monde? I've never been to Louisiana. Oh, well, I don't recommend most of it, but New Orleans is good. I would really like to go. I, I saw Easy Rider. I would like to have. I would like to have a trip in a graveyard. And then and then stay in New Orleans. I don't yeah, I don't yeah. want to get killed by people in a sundown town. You yeah, know what I mean? Don't ride don't ride your motorcycle out of New Orleans. Uh, it was the lesson of that movie. That is that is that is what I've learned, and it's sort of burned into like my cortex up here somewhere. I don't know where the cortex is. Is the whole thing the cortex? I don't know. Sure, totally. I think yeah. I think more likely to happen is the uh, James Bond. What movie was it? Uh, Live or Let Die. More likely you'll go to a jazz funeral and find out it's for you and they'll kill you at it. Classic, classic, you know, classic. That's good. I was, I, I was really <laughs> into the aesthetic of jazz funerals, even prior to the internet meme. This is like 10 years ago. And there's, a, uh, there's an internet meme of jazz funerals. Yeah. What? <laughs> like the pallbearers, like the dancing pallbearers. Oh, I don't oh, know. Those guys are, this this guys are actually African, Africa, though. Yeah. But it's yeah, kind of the African. same idea as a jazz funeral to me. You know, it's kind of like it, it a, absolutely it's is, into yeah. a bit of a, a celebrity, you know, uh, or sorry, cel celebration. I love these people. They do it as a business. <laughs> They're like, do you want us to dance your coffin? Because we're your guys. I would fucking hella square away my, my, my will to that. I, I kind of oh, yeah. like the idea of if I had enough people, like, you know how people are like, I can kind of like sort of rate the quality of my life by the number of people who go to my funeral sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I get the sentiment behind that. I, I, like no one's really keeping score, but I, I do think that like it is good to make friends who really care about you and who mm -hmm. will be sad if you. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know where I stand in that register. I'm pretty introverted in all things, but I would <laughs> like to uh, have, 
if someone does actually decide to commemorate my my death with a ritual of some kind it, w- it would be fun and also amusing to me for it to be a celebration as if they're like hooray jeff is dead that that actually is hilarious to me and i kind of <laughs> like that and, and so like i would totally pay for these guys to come you know oh i love it yeah and yep, literally yep, yep. dance on my grave <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> Okay, so I do I do love this meme and yeah, I'm okay. into it. <laughs> it's not really a jazz funeral, but you know. I'm down with it. Yeah. So trickery. Um, uh, looks, I don't know how great. we got uh, I don't know how we got on under the idea. Oh, we were talking about New Orleans. Coffee uh, and trickery, yeah. Okay. Uh I, I think you just like actually paint things, right? You paint colors. I heard it's like a Zelda action game at the same time though. Okay. There's like combat. I don't know. It's it's unclear, but it looks uh um... and then it also looks like the witness here. I know, right? Uh, it has, it reminds me of Minute, M-I-N-I-T. Yeah. Which I don't know if you played this, but it was really delightful. Uh, I heard things about it, right? Every level is like less than, it's like a few seconds long or something like that. Um, you just die every 60 seconds. Oh. You have, you have 60 seconds to play the game and that's it. And it's uh, like a tiny Zelda game. And it's, it's really excellent. Like it sort of has a Dark souls you unlock a bunch of shortcuts and get other, other spawn points throughout the map to work with. Um, but every life is still 60 yeah. seconds. We have such high concept shit lined up for our next game, game jam. And I wonder if we should just be like, yeah, it's just like you're a little spaceship running around shooting shit, but then you die every 30 seconds. <laughs> you know? Well, like... save, save for global game jam. <laughs> Yeah. Historically accurate game jam. We're gonna make a dark Salem with witch trial game for some reason. Yeah. I, I think it's actually gonna be really fun. I like the trial aspect of it. It's gonna be a cool, a cool bundle of state for us to figure out. Exactly. Um it's a lot of content generation for it to for, to really click together, which is why, mm-hmm. which is good why we have it's it's good that we have a week to do it. Yeah, yeah. And we've we haven't really generated content yet, so I'm excited. Yeah. We wrote we wrote like less than half a page of content for blockchain. And it was hard enough as it was. I'm like, gee, how can I write a little sentence in front of this character that does not immediately make, make reference to their gender or appearance. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> or the game series that they came from. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Um, I, I did I did include the pun for the Alucard looking motherfucker mm-hmm. who is actually Alucard. Uh, oh yeah. Watch out for this sharp dresser. I enjoyed that. It was it was it was the apex of the game in my opinion. <laughs> okay. Chicory is a game that we would like to play. Death Store is another one that I hear about a lot. Uh, it looks awesome. Looks really, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Horizon, Horizon 2, I assume you're going to buy that the day it comes out because I know you. Yeah, Horizon's really good. Horizon is in that category of like, there's nothing wrong with this. Like, there's nothing to take me out of this giant open world game and everything about it is great. Uh, although Horizon, the concept design is like still like, borderline offensive to me um the sort of like uh fu- future native future native americans yeah yeah it's it's it, it feels like they are making fun of their own characters a little bit and uh it, it's kind of embarrassing but you know what the, the, the thing i didn't like about that game was that like everyone had the the entirely self-serious like m- many tribes that they put together i was like y'all could have just called yourselves like the junkers and the and the robo friends or something like but they're like the utani and i'm like who the fuck made this up like i don't know yeah it like it missed it missed on the post-apocalypse just a little bit probably because they didn't want to telegraph the post-apocalypse so early on but like meh (laughs) it is it is a game unlike any other i've played in that regard where the where the um where the world building is like patently absurd Oh yeah, but the narrative is actually really good. It was really cool, right? And especially the gameplay, like the, 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 the parallel like storytelling of like what yeah. happens leading up to the apocalypse, and you learn about it, you know, and it's like it's really intense, and you like get into the boardroom where they actually made the decision to like. Ah, oh, so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean it was a really fun game. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, just really dumb world building in some places. Yeah, Dagarapa recently. Uh, released for the switch i'm probably going to get it someday and play it boyfriend dungeon also came out this year we both were paying attention to that oh yeah i grabbed that for my last flight and then my flight got canceled so i'm saving it for my next flight uh it looks it looks like hades but you do more dating which sounds great all in all (laughs) uh kind of like a 
uh, an eh year in video games, I would say. Um, hmm. Like the best game that we we both, or at least the best best game I played, mm-hmm. was a game that came out two years ago with Disco Elysium or three years ago. That's true. That's true. Um, to be fair, are we are we in a pandemic slump? Because we are. We definitely are. There's not a lot yeah. that got released this year. I feel like a lot of things got delayed, uh, yeah. like Horizon, which would probably be on your list for game of the year. Uh, yeah. that came out this year. Yeah. <laughs> Okie doke. Uh, that is the game roundup. 